once proposed to be among the largest airports in the world, Montreal Mirabel Airport would turn out to be one of the shortest lived, as poor planning and political interference transformed what was meant to be the new gateway of Canada into an ill-sighted white elephant with substandard connections, or while changes in commercial aviation technology quickly rendered its one primary role obsolete. The story of Mirabel Airport begins in the 1960s, when following a strong economic boom in the city of Montreal, including the inauguration of the first Montreal Metro line on October 14, 1966, and the 1967 International and Universal Exposition held in the summer of that year, there was a great amount of enthusiasm that the city would soon rival Toronto as the main economic and social centre of Canada, but eyes rapidly turned to the city's existing airport and whether it was suited to handling such a huge influx of activity. Dorval Airport, located 12 miles from downtown Montreal, had opened in September 1941, but by the 1960s, and with the rise of the jet age, its facilities were soon being considered obsolete. The airport handling 3.3 million passengers in 1965, an increase of 16.7% over the previous year, while forecasts made by the Canadian Department of Transport predicted the facility would double its passenger numbers every eight years, reaching 30 million passengers per annum by 1990. While runway and facility expansions were considered, land purchase orders and noise complaints by local residents halted these proposals, and the decision was made in 1968 that a new airport would be built that could handle ever larger aircraft designs, including the upcoming Boeing 747, Douglas DC-10 and Lockheed TriStar wide-body jets, and the supersonic airliner Concorde, of which four had been ordered by Air Canada. During initial planning, 20 sites were considered for the airport's new location, culminating in a short list of five, the preferred site being vaudreuil durian approximately 25 miles west of Montreal, an ideal place to put the airport, as it had superb rail and road links, as well as being 80 miles from the Canadian capital of Ottawa, a new airport facility in the area having the potential to serve both cities if complemented by high-speed rail connections, such as the brand new UAC turbotrain service operated by Via Rail on the Toronto to Montreal service. Sadly, due to the proximity of the site to the Ontario border, only six miles to the west, it was considered that airport workers may move from Quebec to Ontario due to the lower taxes in that province, compounded further by the cold political relationship between Quebec Premier Robert Bourassa and Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, Bourassa initially preferring a site 70 miles east of Montreal in Drummondville, before finally, through a compromise with the federal and provincial governments, situating the airport 30 miles north of the downtown area at a place called Saint Scholastique in March 1969. Christened the name Mirabel, a name taken from a 19th century farm located on what would become the airport site, the location of the new facility was one that had been shortlisted during the initial study but was compromised by a lack of surface transport connections, including roadways and high-speed trains. Bounded to the north by Quebec Autoroute 15 between saint agathe de mont Montreal, and the American border at Champlain, New York, the requirements of building an airport here demanding the provision of at least two new expressway standard road connections and a direct rail link. The main purpose of the new gateway at Mirabel was to continue Montreal's already significant role as a fuel stop and connection point for transatlantic flights from Canada and the western United States to Europe. Early jet airliner designs like the Boeing 707, Douglas DC-8 and Vickers VC-10 being unable to complete the full journey on one tank, and thus requiring a stopover. While due to it being the first major regional centre after the transatlantic crossing, Montreal served as an important destination for European travellers both visiting the city and connecting to other Canadian and American destinations via Dorval's extensive domestic airline network. To suit the perceived increase in demand, Mirabel was built in a manner that could be expanded where required, but provided enough space for high-priority widebodies to manoeuvre to the terminal buildings without causing traffic jams on the taxiways and aprons. The main inspiration for the airport's overall layout coming from the then under-construction Dallas-Fort Worth Airport in Texas which was based on an open-plan apron design, with terminals lining a central spine road that could easily be expanded or extended without significant infrastructural hurdles being encountered. As such, a 17,000-acre site was allocated to accommodate the airport, with final proposals being to host six runways of around 10,000 feet in length each, comprising four runways facing northeast-southwest and two facing east-west, with land reserved for the option of extending two of the runways to 15,000 feet if required while a seventh runway of around 2,000 feet in length would handle regional turboprops and stall flights to other local destinations including Ottawa and Toronto. Together with the six runways, six passenger terminals, a cargo terminal, a stall port and general aviation ramp would also be provided, all of which would be centred on the newly created Quebec Auto Route 50 
running through the site from its intersection with the adjacent Route 15 to Ottawa, 99 miles to the west, each terminal being connected via an automated people mover system, while connections into Montreal itself will comprise the existing road network and a high-speed express train called TRAM, or the Transport Rapide Régional Aéroportoir Montreal Mirabel, which would be capable of a 75 mile an hour top speed and complete the 30 mile journey to the downtown area in around 25 minutes. To ensure the airport could be developed without fears of noise abatement concerns, an 80,000 acre buffer zone, approximately 80% the size of Montreal Island, was expropriated, inside of which the facility would be built alongside a new industrial park, making Mirabel the largest airport in the world in terms of property area at the time. While in order to accommodate the airport, 800 homes were demolished and 12,000 residents were relocated, those who remained being granted 10-year leases to stay within the expropriated zone. Eventually, construction of the first phase of the airport commenced in June 1970 at a cost of 700 million Canadian dollars, the desire to provide an operational facility as quickly as possible being due to Montreal winning the bid to host the 1976 Summer Olympic Games in May, meaning that, in order to show off the city's brand new airport, whatever facilities could be delivered in time for the Games would be done by the end of 1975 at the latest. The airport subsequently opened what was meant to be its first phase on October 4, 1975, comprising two runways, a single passenger terminal supported by six satellite terminals known as Aero Keys, located on the main apron, and a cargo facility, the Aero Keys being accessible through the use of dedicated passenger transfer vehicles, which cost 400,000 Canadian dollars each, while the main terminal itself hosted only six jetways, the PTVs being eventually replaced by a series of direct underground tunnels to the individual Aero Keys. Having been completed 10 months prior to the start of the Olympic Games, all international flights from Dorval were transferred to Mirabel, the intention being to transfer all domestic services by 1982 and sell off Dorval's field for other developments. But once the Games had concluded in August 1976, interest in Montreal rapidly waned through a mixture of its 1960s economic success starting to cool in the wake of the 1973 oil crisis and the improved range of international airliners, meaning there was no requirement for flights from the western United States and Canada to undertake fuel stopovers. As the economic justification for Mirabel fell away, so did any desire to expand the airport's facilities, and despite a proposed opening date of 1980 for the tram rapid transit system, this rail connection was abandoned in favour of a bus service, which took an hour to connect the city with the airport depending on traffic levels, while the single terminal and two runways would be the only parts of the original plan to be delivered. In dividing the operations of domestic and international travel at Montreal, the Quebec government, in light of dropping passenger numbers and the endemic lack of suitable surface transfer between Mirabel and the downtown area, abandoned proposals to have domestic services transferred from Dorval, surrendering 81,000 acres of the expropriated land back to its original owners, as all plans to expand the airport further were cancelled, a move that not only rang the death knell for Mirabel as a viable passenger airport, but also meant connections between domestic and international flights at Montreal required an hour-long bus ride between the two facilities making both airports highly unpopular with passengers wishing to transfer at Montreal, instead opting for either Toronto, Vancouver or Calgary. With Mirabel only remaining open due to the Department of Transport banning international flights into Dorval, the airport struggled to see passenger numbers meet forecasts throughout its operational life, and by the mid-1990s, the economy of Montreal was suffering due to a lack of interest by airlines wishing to see their passengers have to undertake hour-long domestic to international transfers. The lack of political will to invest in Mirabel and see it become the airport it was originally envisaged, striking an ill chord with businesses and residents of the city. In the end, Mirabel's fate was sealed when, in 1997, Dorval was allowed to host international flights once again, and traffic, aside from cargo operations, dried up at the then 22-year-old facility, only a handful of services continuing to cling on at the airport, but with no hope of ever turning a profit or attracting other carriers back to the field. The only significant event during the latter days of Mirabel's existence being the role it played in Operation Yellow Ribbon on September 11, 2001, where, after the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York, US airspace was shut down, and 10 flights were diverted to the airport in order to seek sanctuary. Now barely seeing any flights, and with a new 716 million Canadian dollar expansion underway at the recently renamed Montreal Trudeau International Airport, allowing it to accommodate up to 20 million passengers per year, Montreal Mirabel Airport was close to passenger operations on October 31, 2004, its final flight being an Air Transat service to Paris which departed shortly before 9pm, bringing down the curtain on only 29 years of operation, having ever only attracted a peak of 3 million passengers a year 
against a forecast 60 million passengers by 2010, while carrying an annual deficit to the Quebec taxpayer of 20 million Canadian dollars. With the end of passenger services, the many aspects of its infrastructure used to serve commercial flights were dismantled over the following decade. The Chateau Aeroport Mirabel, a 354-room hotel located opposite the main terminal and opened in 1977, closing its doors in 2002 after only 25 years of use, while the terminal in Gates, after seeing brief reuse for films and TV productions, was torn down between 2014 and 2016 after years of deadlock between potential buyers of the site. Aeroport de Montreal, the airport authority in charge of both Dorval and Mirabel, no longer able to pay the excessive maintenance cost of the vast structure at expense to themselves, while foreseeing no possible commercial future for the building. Today, most of the passenger orientated structures have been levelled, but cargo operations continue to thrive, complemented further by the opening of a manufacturing base for Bombardier Aerospace and Airbus Canada, where final assembly of the CRJ-700, CRJ-900 and CRJ-1000 regional jet range, and the Airbus A220, formerly the Bombardier C-Series, is undertaken, while general aviation and private flights, as well as employee charter services conducted by Mirabel-based airline Nolinor Aviation, are conducted from a prefabricated terminal. In conclusion, Montreal Mirabel Airport was a proposal not without merit, as the concept of creating a large international airport away from the downtown area, with room to expand, and designed with a layout that allows for incremental expansion without major infrastructural obstacles, was not a fundamentally flawed one. Sadly, without the proposed high-speed surface connections, the downturn in traffic to Montreal on international routes, and an apparent hesitancy by the Quebec government to see through the full transfer of operations to Mirabel rather than splitting domestic and international operations by way of an hour-long bus ride, meant the highly unpopular facility was doomed to failure, and within a decade of its opening, the airport was facing its premature demise.